Attention Institute personnel. We're conducting a special field investigation at the moment and operating on a reduced schedule. To help fill the time, though, our friends over at Owlcat Games have provided a whole host of keys to the Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader closed beta. If you'd like to see how things are looking in the Coronas Expanse, you'll find the keys in the video description. Act swiftly, they're first come, first serve. The Space Marine Legions were never just an army, they were a symbol. Of what exactly would depend on their beholder? Military perfection? Humanity's unwavering determination? The might of the Emperor? A good iterator could convince the crowds that gathered to see them that the Legionaries represented in a number of things. Yet above all, they were a living testament to the Great Crusade, physical evidence that roared across the skies and marched through the mud that this ultimate human undertaking wasn't just a bunch of lies or a deluded fantasy. The Astartes were proof that a better world and a better galaxy was possible. The decision to shatter the legions then into various chapters, a decision made in the aftermath of one of the greatest conflicts the Imperium had ever endured, was therefore not one made without every consideration. For this was a tacit acknowledgement that the dream of the Emperor was dead, and the tools required to bring it to fruition were better dismantled and repurposed in saving what remained. But it was also a somber recognition that the legions were not above the taint of corruption or the perils of internal strife. Only by dismantling the legions and dispersing power could the Astartes become a more decentralized and resilient force. Only then could another Horus Lupercal be rendered an impossibility. Or at least that's what the proponents of the Codex Astartes argued. Those in opposition to its adoption resented the loss of unity the restructuring would bring. They drew attention to the fact that mobilizing dozens of chapters to the destruction of a particularly powerful foe would be far more cumbersome than a single legion. With individual chapters specialized in a certain form of warfare, the collective versatility and adaptability of the Astartes would be weakened. There would be a tremendous loss of institutional knowledge, with the archaic technology and methods harbored by the legions fragmented even further. And finally, to dissolve the legions would destroy centuries of tradition, remove the shared heritage of the Astartes, and risk the very identity of the successive chapters. Ultimately, the legions were dissolved and the Codex Astartes was adopted, but even 10,000 years later, the question remains, was this the right decision? As the 42nd millennium dawns, could the Imperium have found itself in a much stronger position if instead of 1,000 independent chapters, it could command the assembled might of 10 or more Astartes legions? Even the man directly responsible for their destruction, Rebude Gilliman, with the benefit of hindsight, might reflect on that question. But on this episode of Incoming, I'll give you my own opinion. Now I must confess, earlier in my career I considered this question to have a pretty clear answer. Breaking the legions was a mistake, full stop. And my rationale was pretty simple. Developing the doctrine for how an armed force operates requires answering a few key questions, such as, is this force meant to defeat external threats, or is it devoted to internal security? No military is purely one over the other, and an enormous number of interlocking factors will ultimately determine where on the spectrum it ends up. But in most cases, being better at one will make you worse at the other. Breaking the legions into smaller chapters and giving them their independence definitely qualifies as a fairly major shift towards internal security, and as a consequence, the Astartes are now just that much less suited towards fighting external threats. Compared to a legion, a chapter has greatly reduced defensive capability. It's ill-suited to long campaigns or wars of attrition without Imperial support, and when they are supported, there can be a lack of experience or coordination when running joint operations. They also have a limited strategic focus, with smaller military units like chapters only able to exert power across a correspondingly smaller area. These and the other arguments initially made against the Codex Astartes are totally valid. There's no denying that some of the military doctrine that was adopted to prevent large-scale rebellions among the Astartes will directly inhibit their ability to conduct a war. And that argument was enough for me. The legions were demonstrably better suited towards protracted campaigns and large-scale battles compared to the chapters. Therefore, breaking apart the legions was a mistake. But while this mindset is reasonable and rooted in reality, it repeats the oldest and gravest mistake humanity can make. Like so many others across the history of the Imperium, I failed to seriously regard the threat posed by the Dark Gods of Chaos. 
The Imperium of Man does not have the luxury of facing down powers who only play by the conventional rules of war and always behave in predictable, self-serving ways. Sensible policies, checks and balances, these are all completely impotent weapons when it comes to preventing the defilement of the soul. Xenos races, too, have grown increasingly capable of supplanting Imperial rule, and while the psycho-conditioning of the Astartes has so far proven resistant to alien philosophies, there is no guarantee this will always be the case. In this kind of environment, when the threat from within can be just as dangerous as the threat from without, internal security needs to be regarded as an absolute essential, not only during times of heightened alert, but constantly. In his arguments, Gilliman was right too. Another betrayal on the scale of the Horus Heresy would destroy the Imperium with no chance for recovery. In this case, shifting towards internal security was not a direct pivot away from external threats, it was more nuance, hindering some elements but making others more resilient. What really changed my mind, though, was seeing how chapters are typically deployed in the 41st and 42nd millennia. The galaxy is in a very different situation now than the one faced by the Great Crusade. There is no ever-advancing front, no area behind the lines. There are only pockets of resistance in a sea of wilderness. The war is everywhere, with any system not directly under siege itself, nevertheless on permanent war footing to support efforts elsewhere. Many important Imperial worlds are completely cut off from one another, and even the greatest bastions of Imperial strength might be assailed by forces so devastating that their resources must be wholly reserved for their own defense. Within this theater of war, Space Marine chapters are rarely assembled in their entirety. For the most part, individual companies, squads, or fire teams are sent to whatever front, whatever battle they can make the greatest impact within. The Astra Militarum and some other Imperial organizations are much better suited to protracted wars of attrition, so in these cases the Astartes are better utilized as the tip of the spear in the attack or in a critical point in the defense. They are force multipliers, amplifying the effectiveness of the Imperium's war effort beyond its inherent capabilities. Only against the most powerful threats will an entire chapter be assembled, and only once every few generations will multiple chapters need to be assembled in common purpose. The Wars of Armageddon, the Siege of Rax, the Battle of McCraig, and the Devastation of Baal, for example. And even in an era when encroaching Tyranid Hive fleets and awakening Necron tomb worlds make these larger campaigns more and more common, there are so many other threats that need to be dealt with first, it is still very uncommon for a chapter to deploy more than a couple companies together. And even if the Imperium wanted to mobilize an entire legion, its ability to do so has been greatly weakened. Sustaining such a force requires a constant stream of ammunition, weapons, ships, and technology, all of much greater sophistication than the Imperium is used to producing. Logistically, it is far easier for the Imperium to supply a thousand chapters than it would be to supply ten or more legions. When viewed through the lens of the 42nd millennium, splitting the legions doesn't seem like the worst idea. Even if they had remained intact, the shifting nature of warfare would require that they be deployed to an ever-increasing number of war zones. What many critics failed to realize, myself included, was that the benefits of the Codex Astartes extended well beyond merely preventing another Horus. When he wrote the Codex, Gilliman was looking into the future. He tried to imagine the type of warfare the Imperium would be engaged in across the millennia, and described the type of fighting force that would be best suited to win that war. And history has mostly proven him right. For 10,000 years, the kinds of battles in which the strength of an entire legion have been necessary for victory were the exception, not the rule. But this may be changing. With the fall of Cadia, the spread of the Great Rift, encroaching hive fleets and rising tomb worlds, the galaxy is undergoing another seismic change. Already, Gilliman has made some amendments to the Codex Astartes, and who's to say that the restrictions on chapter strength might not be rescinded? Whatever you think of the man, none would deny that Gilliman is a pragmatist, willing to shatter established norms in the pursuit of any advantage. But what is our final verdict? Was breaking the legions a good move or not? I think it was. Even before the ashes had settled on Terra, Gilliman correctly identified what the future of the Imperium was going to look like, and designed the force best suited to defend it. Could Gilliman have been more diplomatic in how he presented his codex to his brothers and their respective legions? Of course, but I don't think that was his objective. The Codex Astartes was as much a display of political power as it was a military treatise. In breaking the legions, Gilliman solidified his place as the Emperor's successor. After the heresy, the Imperium needed a confident, central figure to rally around, and enforcing the adoption of his codex, 
Gilliman displayed his capability as a statesman and a leader. In accepting his doctrine and applying it to their own legions, his brothers tacitly accepted Gilliman's authority to alter the designs of the Emperor, legitimizing his governance in the process. Approving the Codex Astartes was in a way a vote of confidence from the other Primarchs. But the right decision in the 31st millennium may not be the right decision in the 42nd. I think the Tyranids alone provide a reason for re-establishing legion-sized forces of Astartes. Gilliman might want to call them something else, or make it a more centralized confederation of already aligned chapters, but however it's done, I think larger formations are necessary. Is it actually possible though? Can the Imperium support such an increase in the production of things like power armor? And would the chapters be able to sustain such numbers with their limited gene seed? That's ultimately a question for another time. But all that, of course, is just my opinion. And even though I and I alone have pierced the veil of ignorance to discover the true nature and deepest secrets of the grim darkness of the far future, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Was Gilliman right in breaking the legions? Has the time come for their return? And can the Imperium even handle the logistics of such a force? Let me know in the comments below, and until next time, this has been Incoming. In Incoming, the Templin Institute discusses the theories and ideas found across alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards. 